Okay, guys, uh, happy Tuesday night. Uh, it's late October. This is Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors. This is day two tomorrow of deer hunting. Last Friday I was out. I haven't finished the video, but I struck out miserable cold, rained all day. I toughed it out from 7.30 in the morning until 4.30 at night. Tomorrow, uh, I'm doing my research now. I'm going back back into, this is, this is Loudoun Forest Preserve. This is Loudoun Miller State Park in Oregon, Illinois. Oregon's up here. Uh, what I did on Onyx, uh, webmap.onyxmaps.com, that was the stand that I set up uh, last Friday. And that family, that couple, they live somewhere along here, but they get in here in the afternoon, they cut across the road, walk down in the end of the property, get into the forest preserve, and start walking down all these trails wearing blaze orange and talking at the top of their lungs. <laughs> Lesson learned, I colored that particular icon, as hopeful as it was, I colored that one yellow and put a little note in there saying, don't go back there except in the morning if you can get out there. But it was a full mile through the will, through the trail to get there. So that's a little bit long. Tomorrow, Wednesday, it's supposed to be sunny. And I'm here in Rochelle. I'm at a Super 8 motel right now in Rochelle, in Illinois, only 10 miles away from the Forest Preserve, not an hour and 20 minute drive. So I'll be there in like 10 minutes, but I'm going to get up at probably... God, I'm going to get up at about 4.30, guys. I'm going to be in there at 5. And where I'm headed, this was parking lot number 1. And I tried that. You can see my trail. I followed, first I followed the the I followed the ravine in between these. Uh, ultimately, I ended up down this trail just because it looked like it butted up against the, the fields where the deer would have been eating and then coming in. They would have been foraging. It was the right move, except for the, the loud couple. And ultimately, I followed the, the hills are all here. I went around them to get back to the Jeep. That was a long walk back, let me tell you. But tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to try getting in the woods a little bit sooner, and that means I'm coming in on this side. So I'm going to park at the equestrian trail right there. And this, this should get me in actually pretty quick. In only about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to be sitting here on the edge of farmland that's already been harvested. It's supposed to be a sunny day. If the winds come out of the west or out of the south, I should be pretty well protected. So that's what I'll be looking. You don't want to be cold up in your stand if the deer are out here anywhere. I'm going to try to get there super early in the morning because a lot of the big bucks, they're going to be moving right, ah, they're going to be moving right at daybreak. Then there's going to be a lull. And then if they're moving at all the rest of the day, you're probably going to see them between 10 o'clock and noon, something like that. That's the only other time. In the afternoon, I don't think hardly anybody. Are they out there? Yeah, but hardly they're hardly out there. That's Remember me telling you about looking at where the winds are blowing before you make your decision on where your stand's going to go? This is, this is where I'm going to be hunting tomorrow, right just south of Rockford, looking at the big picture. Everything's pre the prevailing westerlies are indeed going to be around. It's going to be a cool, cold day low 30s to start but you can see for a long time tomorrow we've got a clockwise rotation but mostly everything is tracking to the northeast or the east northeast the point is the winds are coming from the west so if i go back to my onyx map here and look here and try to decide you know where do i want to be where do i want to be hunting i want to be with the woods acting as a windbreak for me so i want as many woods to the west of me as possible because this is going to be the way that it goes. Now, if I do that, I'm going to end up benefiting from the fact that the winds are going to act like a windbreak. But also, the flip side is, the winds are going to be blowing my scent directly towards where I think the deer are coming. And if they're a typical deer, they always like to move upwind. So they're going to be going back and forth like this. Coming upwind, smelling, smelling, smelling as they go. I just got to make sure I get up there, get, get as invisible as quickly as possible. But... Hopefully, I'll be pretty well set up right there. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you. I'm using Wonder Map. If you look here, wonderground.com slash Wonder Map. Google meets weather.com. Phenomenal tool for showing me what the weather patterns are going to look like. And I've got Onyx Maps, which is also a mobile web app. 
Those are my tools that I'm using to try to decide where best to hunt tomorrow. Huh. 4.30 in the morning. I can't sleep anymore. Brain on fire. I'd rather be in the woods waiting a little bit longer in the parking lot than sitting here in this hotel room. But the day starts with some kind of calisthenics. It's the only chance that you're going to get. So it's drop and do 50 push-ups. I got to start waking these muscles up because it's going to be... It's going to be a battle against the cold today. It's 28 degrees outside to start. So everything in your body is going to want to not do anything. But when the shot comes, you have to actually be strong. You have to be ready for it. And that means a little bit of warm up right now. It'll just help me out in the woods. Four layers of clothing on. Heated socks. Whoops, where? Heated socks. Loose boots. You want to have room in there, not too tight. Four layers of clothing, one tight, shiny one. <sighs> Headed into the Jeep. 28 degrees, frost. Frost on the Jeep. Winds coming out of the southwest. Okay, 28 degrees, just like I thought. But what's cool is to see that way up there, see that little star in the sky? That's not a star, that's the planet Mars. How cool is that? Okay, still talking. One thing you're gonna see me do over the next 27 miles is be staring out as much as I can into the fields. Anywhere my headlights cast, I'm looking to see if there's any shining eyes. I'm trying to get an idea if the deer are in the fields right now feeding, or if they're not. Because if they're not, there's no point in me trying to butt up against the edge of a piece of field what do you do if you hit a deer on the way out? Deer, at least in the state of Illinois, but in most states, uh, you get to harvest that roadkill. You harvest it on the spot. You don't have to record it that I know of, at least not in the state of Illinois. Uh, all you have to do is, and you can have as many as you want. You can take as many as you want, even roadkill that somebody else hit. You can take it home for free, no tagging, no licensing, no cutting the head off that I'm aware of. You take it all home the only thing that you're required to do is hang on to one last piece that represents somehow the sex of the animal or at least a piece of it you have to hold on to that one piece until you eat the last chunk of meat and then you can dispose of the that last that last item that last piece of evidence or whatever you want to call it all right you're looking with me we're, we're just glancing our headlights out to the right and to the left, I see a couple of lights out there, but they're not eyes. A, yeah, there's a deer. Do you see it? Look on the left over here. I'm going to turn. Do you see it right there? One, two, three. And they're going right into the woods where I want to hunt. That is exactly where I want to be. By the way, let me tell you a little bit about my new heating stuff. I've got a heated vest that's on full right now. And I have to admit, feel snug. I can feel that warmth right in the small of my lower back. That is so nice. On top of that, the socks that I got are really doing the job because what happens is the socks not only heat up all the way around my foot, not just on the bottom, all the way around, but my feet tend to get wet and clammy no matter what I do, wet and clammy. And the heat seems to actually be drying the socks out which is more than I could have ever hoped for. So right now, those are super toasty feet in very nice $59 redhead, redhead boots from uh, Bass Pro. That sounds like a plug, but I don't get any money from them. It's just a damn good boot for $59. Funny thing, I, I don't know why people buy big camouflage boots. When you're 10 foot up in the tree, the only part of the boot that the deer sees is the bottom. So who fucking cares if it's camouflaged? This is just the best part of hunting. It's when it's so quiet. You can hear things from hundreds of yards away. Like the turkey an hour ago. Although I haven't heard him lately. But I fully expect to see them today. Should be an interesting day. I've got a brand new battery 
so I can continue recording. Although I might actually run out of space. Not about a battery. All right, more later. Well, it's midday. I haven't seen anything. Well, I saw one. One little hump out there, about 70 yards. Couldn't have been anything but a deer, but it, there was no shot. And then I've got some joker over there that I bought. He's got a pair of like store bought antlers and he's banging them together, playing shaving a haircut. Don't, don't. <laughs> you guys don't bring any of that stuff in the woods with you. Best thing you can do, the, more, the best noise you can make is none at all. Just be quiet and they'll walk right by you. If we're lucky, this is going to be part of their afternoon route, even if it's not part of their morning route. It's a nice day, the sun is shining. There's just no reason not to hang out. It feels great. Sun, sun shining on my, on my outfit and everything feels nice. Just gonna stay here and enjoy. It's three o'clock. I'm climbing down. I'm not done. I've still got three quarters of a mile to walk. Just to get back to the Jeep, I might see something just from the ground. So it's worth it to see if I can maybe spook something up and do that in the daylight. That's it. Day two, done with hunting. <clears throat> nice day. There's my stand. My bow. This came out of the woods about an hour and a half before sundown. This wasn't any point. <clears throat> Don't know why I'm losing my voice. I think it's got something to do with being quiet for a long time. Hope it's that's all. But that's it, guys. I mean, that's hunting. You don't get a deer every single day it just doesn't work like that you're lucky you're lucky if you get one per season you're really lucky if you get two super lucky like you know something we don't you're on you get to hunt on something other than public property i have to start wondering if there's actually more pressure in this forest than i thought that i'm gonna have to go deeper there's a huge section here that's like a half a mile by a mile I'm gonna have to go in deep into parking lot three parking lot four and really get lost maybe even this weekend we'll see but it's gonna be highs of 32 degrees the next three days it's all of that tropical storm Zeta pushing all of this cold air from the Rocky Mountains across and up into Illinois up into Minnesota it's crazy so we'll just watch and see that's it for today, guys. This is Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors. We'll see you out there.